definitely be one to watch out for. Oh my goodness, got the cat knocking stuff over. Hello, Ridge Runner Nation. We're back and better than ever with a new edition of the Weekly Rundown. This week, we're bringing you news results from the Forgotten 50K, Damietti 50, the Laurel Highlands Ultra, and more. We'll also check in with Troy and his new exciting FKT, in addition to all of the fun activities in the world of Strava. Let's get right into it. We have exciting news about Mr. Barty's running streak. He completed 4.43 and 4.44. Well, I guess that wasn't that exciting, but you get the point. Good job, Barty. Have you ever been on a boat lost in the dark, not knowing where the shore is? I know I haven't, but if I ever was, I would be looking for the, a lighthouse because this race, the Lighthouse 100 Miler, took place for the third year up in Peninsula, Michigan. Throughout the 100 miles, runners enjoy mostly unobstructed views of Lake Michigan next to them. This year, we saw a course record on the men's side. Zachary Roeder from Michigan broke the previous course, course record by nine minutes running 16 hours, 24 minutes. Second place was 54-year-old James Gardner from New Jersey finishing with a time of 17 hours, 37 minutes. And rounding out the top three was Danielle Kaisila in 18 hours and 17 minutes. This year we saw four women finish the 100 mile distance and one ran away from the rest. Stephanie Bland bested her time from the previous year by 24 minutes and she took the top spot with a time of 21 hours and two minutes. Second place was Beth Fazier in 25 hours, 21 minutes. Third place was Kathleen Mincy in 29 hours, 29 minutes. And just a few minutes behind her was Les Leslie Studman in 29 hours, 43 minutes. Congrats to all the runners that made it to the lighthouse. The Cayuga Trails 50 took place on June 1st up in Ithaca, New York at Robert H. Thurman State Park. This event is one of the most competitive 50 mile races in the country and is the 2019 USATF 50 mile trail championship. The East Coast could not hold up as a West Coaster took the top spot. Drew Holman from California won the race at the time of seven hours and seven minutes. Second place was Cole Crosby, not to get confused with Sidney Crosby, in 7 hours 33 minutes. Third place was Liam Cregan in 7 hours 46 minutes. The battle for the top spot on the women's side was just that, a battle. Just 14 minutes separated the top three women. That is not a lot of time. I'm going to sit here for 14 minutes so you can understand how little time that actually is. 15 minutes later. Taking the top spot was Justina Wilson from PA with a time of 8 hours and 52 minutes. Second place was Kristen Donsky in 9 hours and 1 minute and rounding out the top 3 was Elisa Lapierre in 9 hours and 6 minutes. This year there were only two finishers from Ohio and one of them happened to be Sarah Wolf from Columbus in 11 hours 47 minutes. Michael Lewis was the second Ohioan from Cleveland area who finished in 13 hours 36 minutes. Congrats to all of our USATF 50 mile trail champions and everyone else that ran the race. The Laurel Highlands Ultra took place over the past weekend. For those that don't know, to register for this race, you must send your registration in via the mail, like old school snail mail. Those Laurel Highland ponies really are the Pony Express. In the 70 mile race, we saw some great results and let's start with the first and second place finishers. Taking the top spot was Cameron Stauffer in 13 hours and three minutes. Second place was Li Yingling in 13 hours and 17 minutes. Both of them happened to be just 28 years old. That's pretty neat. There were a few Ridge Runner Nation members out on the course as well. The two that we happened to see finish was Chadwick Robinson, who finished in 18 hours, 57 minutes, and Elisa Chance, who ran the 50K in seven hours and 36 minutes. Well done, all Laurel Highland runners. The Warhammer 100 took place on June 8th, and this is a point to point 100 mile race. In more technical terms, this means that this race only goes one way. The 2019 edition did just that, as runners made their way across the state of Kentucky. The second year race saw 14 amazing finishers. Scott Parr had a very above par performance and bested the course record by 48 minutes, running a time of 23 hours, 58 minutes. Sub 24, how about them apples? The top female was Madeline Hirschfield, who won by just under one minute. She ran 30 hours in one minute. Hot on her tail was the power couple of Ariella and Danielle Fleury. Both of them finished in 30 hours, two minutes. This race is one I expect to see gain a lot of popularity in the coming years. 
Congrats to all of the finishers. The Forgotten 50 took place for its inaugural race over the weekend, and this race is a special one. This race took place up in Cleveland, Ohio, and ran through the local metro parks. This race is a free event for participants, but they must do one of two things. They have to make a donation to Bessie's Angels and East Cleveland Parks Association, or participate in a trail maintenance cleanup day at Forest Hill Park. First place mail went to Mark Bain in five hours, 23 seconds. Brooks Jones III took second in 543. Adam Nave took third in 545. The women, we have Christina Petrison in 6 hours, 48 minutes, 37 seconds, Steph Duth in 6 hours, 59 minutes, and Halicia Bratko in 7 hours and 24 minutes. We also had some Ridge Runner Nation members complete the race, George Demelis in 6 hours, 23 minutes, and Lindsey Wells in 8 hours. Congrats to all the runners. The Damn Yeti 50 took place in Damascus, Virginia. This race features participants from all around the East Coast. The official results were a little wonky on ultra signup, so bear with us. Taking the top spot in 6 hours 17 minutes was Nicholas Budson from Michigan. This happened to be a new course record, congrats! Coming in second was the previous winner of the race, Alex Brown, just 2 minutes back in 6 hours 19 minutes. The top female was Nancy Wilson in 8 hours 55 minutes, and the runner up was Carrie Marish in 9 hours 7 minutes. One interesting stat that I've never seen before is someone having an ultra sign-up score above 100%. Congrats to Tim Giddy for cracking the code and having an ultra sign-up score of 107%. Congrats to everyone that ran this awesome race. Troy is still moving on the AT at a blazing speed. On the 28th of May, he and his hiking partner Whit Weisbrum went for and got the unsupported FKT for the four state challenge crossing PA, Maryland, West Virginia, and Virginia completing it in 9 hours, 19 minutes, and 17 seconds, a whole 1.5 hours faster than the previous record held by Michael Hole. Congrats on the record, Troy and Witt. Now for our Strava Rundown, where each week we highlight all the interesting activities and achievements from runners all across the East Coast. If you want to get notice on the rundown, make sure you join the Ridge Runners Club on Strava by visiting the link in the description. We'll post that below. We only have one activity to highlight in our Strava Rundown section this week, and it comes from Earl the Pearl. Earl the Pearl took to Strava to mention that it was his annual Strava lawn mow. We have a few questions. First, how did you almost get 1.6 miles? Why did it take one hour and 41 minutes? I mean, these are the pressing questions that Rich Runner Nation deserves to know. We'll be expecting your response, Earl. And with that, thanks for tuning in to this week's rundown from the Ridge Runners. Be sure to check back next week to stay updated on all things trail and ultra in the east. In addition, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell below if you want to be notified every time we release a new video. And if you enjoy our shows, please hit that like button and give it a share with your friends. Remember, you can also find us in podcast form on Apple iTunes and Google Play. I'm your host, John Dolovacki. I'm your host, the better host, Wessie Harton. And we'll see you next week on the Weekly Rundown.